Good morning. And God bless you on this beautiful Sunday morning. We are going to open our Bibles this morning in Psalms 28. Psalms 28, and it says, To you I will cry, O Lord, my rock. Do not be silent to me, lest if you are silent to me. I become like those who go down in the pit. Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry to you, when I lift up my hands towards your holy sanctuary. Do not take me away from the wicked and with the workers of inequality who speak peace to their neighbors, but evil to their hearts. Give them according to their deeds and according to the wickedness of their endeavors. Give them according to the work of their hands. Render to them what they deserve because they do not regard the workers of the Lord nor the operations of his hands. We shall destroy them and not build them up. Bless, blessed be the Lord because he has heard the voice of, the, of my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart I trust in him and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoices and with my songs I will praise him. The Lord is their strength and he is the saving refuge of his anointed. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Shepherd them also and bear them up forever. Amen. Father God, I thank you for another beautiful morning, Father, that you've allowed us to be here, Father God. I pray, Father God, that this service, Father God, be filled with joy, Father God, in our hearts. I pray, Father God, that everything that happens today in this altar, Father God, it's to glorify your beautiful name, Father. I pray, Father God, that the ladies who's going to come and worship your name, Father God, that you hear those voices, Father, their instruments, Father God, and that you see, Father God, that they're doing it, Father, just to please you, Father God. Give them, Father God, keep on giving them the talents that you've given each and one of them, Father God. Bless their homes, bless them at school, Father. Bless them everywhere where they go, Father God, that the light, that your light shines through them, on them, in everything that they do. I also pray, Father God, for our preacher, for our pastor, Jael, Father God, that you continue to use her, Father God, so that your kingdom can expand, Father. Keep on giving her the wisdom, Father God, to keep on studying your word, Father, so that she can continue to teach us, Father God, what is good, Father, what everything that you can teach us, Father. I pray for her family, for her husband, for her daughters, Father God, that you, Father God, are with them, Father God, in everything that they do, in every decision that they make as they grow up, Father God, that you continue to be the center of their lives, Father. I pray, Father God, for everyone that's in here, Father, serving you, Father God, that you bless their homes, Father, that you bless their families, Father, that you give them, Father, the shelter, the food that they need. Oh, Father God, I also take this moment, Father, to pray for Jamie, Father, and her family, Father. I pray, Father, that you give her the strength, Father, that she needs, Father, that strength that only comes from you, Father God, give her, Father, what she needs, Father. Oh, Father God, console her heart, her whole family, Father God. Oh, Father, we thank you, Father, because we know that everything that you do, Father, is perfect. The only thing that we ask for is strength, Father God. Thank you for everything that you do, Father God. And I pray, Father, that this week, Father, when we go to our jobs, when we go to school, Father, that you, that you walk in front of us, Father God that you, Father God, are with us, Father, in everything that we do this whole week, Father, that we put you first, Father, in everything that we do, whether it's school, work, Father, that you, Father, are the reason that we do anything, Father. I thank you for everything, Father God, and, the Father, and we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless everybody. How is everybody doing in this beautiful morning? Amen. In this time, we're going to be taking this time to worship and to thank the Lord for letting us be here in his house one more day.
Bless you, guys. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Well, thank you, everyone that's here and those that are listening to 105.5 FM Impact radio you're listening to the pack church and those that are on our social media on youtube thank you so much for joining us in this beautiful service you are listening to the pack church that we have every sundays at 8 a.m and wednesday 7 p.m our bible study so we're going to be uh doing our offering our tithes and if we could please close our eyes wherever we're at and also those that are listening if you guys would love to give your offering your tithes you could text us at 951-870 Amen. Glory and honor to our Father God. God is so good. We say all the time, all the time, God is good. Amen. So this beautiful morning, we titled the message, Rejoice in Answered Prayer. Rejoicing in Answered Prayer. Father God, thank you for your word today, Jesus, for everything you do and continue doing in our life. We praise you. We worship you, Father. Thank you for everything that you do. Look at those that are here. Look at those that are watching. Look at those that are listening, Father. Continue blessing, Father, those that need more of you. Let this word, Father, that is not me, but you using me for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray and we say amen. Rejoice and answer prayer. Our sister read it this morning. And if we could open our Bibles to Psalms 28. Amen. Psalms 28. And I'm only going to read um, some parts. We're going to focus from 1 to 9, but um, we're only going to read some parts. Amen. And it says, 
To you I will cry, O Lord, my rock. Do not be silent to me, lest if you are silent to me, I become like those who go down in the pit. Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry to you, when I lift up my hands towards your holy sanctuary. Rejoice. Rejoice. We hear that a lot. Well, what's to rejoice? If you could think right now in this time, when was the last time you rejoiced to God? When was the last time you say, you know what, God, I thank you, I praise you, I worship your name. See, when we see Psalms 28, and like I was saying earlier, you know, our sister read it this morning. Psalms 28 is a prayer of David that expresses his trust in God as his rock and his plea for help in times of trouble. The Psalms have two main parts. The first part, verses 1 to 5, is a lament in which David asks God to hear his cry for mercy and to protect him from the wicked. And that is what we read and three says, do not take me away from the wicked and with the workers of inquiry, who speak peace to their neighbors, but evil in their hearts. Give them according to their deeds and according to the wickedness of their evildoers. Give them according to the work of their hands. Render to them and what they deserve. Because they do not regard the works of the Lord, nor the operation of his hands, he shall destroy them. And that's what we see in verses for verses 1 through 5. But when we continue reading verses 6 to 9, it is a praise in which David expresses his confidence and in God's strength and salvation. First, we see the hurt that David is going through and that David is passing. Then we see that he is rejoicing. Then we see that he is going to God and saying, you know what, God? You are my strength. You are my salvation. In the times of trouble, I will still trust you. In the times of trouble, I will still praise you. In the times of trouble, I will still see your powerful hand. And how many of us could say that today? In the times of trouble, Lord, you're right here. You love us. You hold us. You hug us, Jesus. David describes the situation and he faces the threat of the wicked who speak with their neighbors but harbor malice in their hearts. He asks God not to drag him away from the wicked and to repay them for evil deeds. David's concern is not only for his own safety but also for the righteousness of God's judgment. You know, there's people in your life and you say, you know what, Lord, just have mercy on them, right? You pray for them. They, they're going through something. And even though that's not your hurt, you still pray for them. You still cry with them. You know, for a lot of us, you know, Sister Jamie, if you're watching, we are, we're with you. You know, with the loss of your father, we love you. We hug you. But see, I personally never had my dad pass away. But when I got the news, I started crying like if he was my dad. Because you know the brother, how he would, his, his joy, his presence. But I tell her, we will see him again in the name of Jesus. That's the rejoice. Even though I don't know that pain, but I suffered with her. I cried with her. Because that is the pain. That that's the pain that we're supposed to have. And this is why David says, you know, God, it's not only for me, but those because of the righteousness of God's judgment. He acknowledged that the wicked have no regard to the deeds of the Lord, and he trusts that God will tear them down and never build them up again. In the second part of Psalms, David praises God for hearing his cry for his mercy and for being his strength and shield. God hears our cry. God sees our cry. God sees our pain. It's not easy going through situations, but no one said that this was going to be easy. No one said that being Christian or it's not even about religion. It's about relationship with God. Where is our relationship with Christ? See, when we continue reading, he trusts in God's help and leaps for joy, expressing his gratitude and song. He acknowledged that the Lord is the strength of his people and the forges of salvation of his anointed one. David concludes the songs by asking God to save his people and bless his inheritance and to their shepherd and carry them forever. When we see Psalms 28, it's the theme of trusting in God's protection and salvation in the times of trouble. And the importance is the God's judgments. In that trial right now that you're facing, are you praising God in the storm? Because we need to praise him in the storm. Because after the storm comes what? A beautiful rainbow. But see, in this storm, a lot of us are maybe passing that storm right now. When you really think about how David rejoiced after everything that he'd been through, 
Because when we see the story of David, and we're going to share what he has done, but he went to real repentance. Maybe right now you have sinned against God. And maybe right now you have said, you know what, God, I did this and I'm sorry. A lot of us could say, I'm sorry, God, I'm sorry, God, but where is our heart? Because we could say we're sorry, like a lot of us with our parents, Mommy, Dad, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, no, don't hit me, I'm sorry. And then we do it again. Why are you laughing at me, Emily? Huh? <laughs> right? I'm sorry, Mommy, Dad. Remember? You would say, I'm sorry, Dad. But see, a lot of us can say, I'm sorry, but where is our heart? Psalms 51. Have you guys read this? This is a prayer of repentance. And this says, listen, to, listen, listen very closely to what the Lord says in Psalms 51. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the magnitude of your tender mercies. Pull out my transgressions. Wash me through leaf with my kearney and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgression. I acknowledge. Are we acknowledging when we're wrong? Are we accepting when we're wrong and say, Lord, I am wrong. I have failed. Just give me the strength. Just lift me up. And God will do it the same way he did with David. Against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil on your side. Then you be be found just what you speak. And blame is when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in cruelty and in sin. My mother conceived me. Behold, you desire the truth in inward parts. And the hidden part you will make me to know wisdom. When we read Psalms 51, it's a prayer of repentance and plead for forgiveness. King David, after he committed adultery with Bathsheba and had arranged for her husband Uriah to be killed in the battle. You know what that is? To say, you know what? You're pregnant and we're still going to kill. That's, that's, that's hard, right? And how many people do the same thing today? May, many are those in jail, in prison, for murder, for what they have done. But listen to this. If you are listening in those prison cells, in the radio station, I'm telling you, we have so many prisoners that write to us. If you're a prisoner, you're listening to me. Listen to this. In this psalm, David acknowledged his guilt, confessed his sins to God, and seeked for forgiveness. If right now you have sinned against God, ask God to clean you. Ask God to forgive you for what you've done. And see, God is so loving and so mercy that even though we have sinned against him, he is right there. But see, when we do something to somebody, push him back. Don't talk to me. No, I'm mad at you. Oh, don't. Uh, 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 what will you do if God did that to you? No. Nope. Will you keep saying, nope, nope. Yes, God is a loving God, but yes, he's a God of fire. But what I'm telling you today, if you have a sin against God, ask him to clean you. The Psalms begin with David pleading for mercy, acknowledging God's unfailing love and great compassion. We really need to understand. I feel like a lot of us really don't understand the love of God in our lives. You know why? Because we are still here. We're still standing. And even the times of trouble we want to fall, we're still here because God picks us up in the name of Jesus. He asked God to bail out his transgression, wash away his impurity, and cleanse him from his sin. David then confesses his wrongdoing, acknowledging that his sin is always before him and that he has sinned against God alone. Are you acknowledging? Are you saying, yes, God, I did this. Yes, God, I failed. Yes, God, I'm sorry. No, God, I did not do that. Or I didn't mean to. Let's acknowledge what we have done wrong so he could clean us. Because that's how we will grow. How do we expect to grow if they don't get our attention? The same way our parents, they tell us, hey, don't do this, don't do that, right? Because they want to help us. They want to show us. You don't think our Father God wants to show each and one of us how to love him when we're wrong? He recognizes that God is just in his verdict and justifying his judgment. David then acknowledged his own sinfulness, even from birth, and recognizes that God desires faithfulness and wisdom in the secret place of his heart. He asked God to clean him. And when we really think about this, you know God knows everything. But right now, just really think. David, when he, when, 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 when he was anointed king, right? 
They said him. David? What about his other brothers? But you know what God looked at? His heart. When we go back to Psalms 51, he's repenting from his heart. So God already knew that he was going to do this. God knows everything. So God knew where is his heart. And that's what this whole Psalms 51 is about, prayer and repentance. He asked God to clean him, to make him whiter than snow, and restore, him, and restore to him the joy and the salvation to sustain him. David offers a sacrifice of a broken spirit, recognizing that God does not delight in external sacrifices, but the heart is truly repentant. He really repented. And maybe a lot of us are still in this misery because we do not really repent. We do not accept when we're wrong. We do not want to know or see the reality. We justify. We cannot justify. When we repent with all of our hearts, we know who our trust is. See, sin can kill us physically, spiritually. We're dry. We're dead. We cannot be like that. First John 1, 8 through, t- 8 through 10. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves from the truth is not in us. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. Oh, I'm perfect. No, I don't sin. You're sinning right now. We're not perfect. The only perfect one is God. But this is why we cannot justify say, oh, I'm not perfect. I could still live this life. No, it doesn't work that way. We're not perfect, but we ask God to give us the strength to be just like him. Who wants to be like Christ? Amen. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. James 4.17, if anyone then knows they good, they ought to do and does not do it, it's the sin of them. Isaiah 53 says, we are like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned our ways and the Lord has laid on his equity on all of us. And when we read in Psalms 23, he is our pastor and we are the shepherd. He left 99 for one. And that one is you and me today. Because he loves you. He loves you so much. I don't know how many times I'm going to say in this preaching, but he loves you. He loves you. But Pastor JL, if he loves me, then why am I going through this pain? Because he wants to show us that we need him and depend on him. It's, it's about that, to show his love. So God can say, okay, you see where you're at or see where you were? Look where you're at now. Look where I'm taking you. Look where I'm placing you. That is the love of God. These verses and so many in the Bible acknowledge the reality of sin and the need for forgiveness and redemption. They remind us of our human weakness and the importance of turning God for help in overcoming sin. David is going to God and pleading this prayer. But see, a lot of us, oh, Lord, you guys are going to laugh, but this is is real. Oh, Lord, please, that my wife doesn't find out that I'm cheating on her. Oh, Lord, please, that my husband doesn't find out that I'm sneaking out at night. Oh, Lord, please, let me win this lottery. You think God is going to answer that prayer? God is going to put it right there in there. You know, one day you're going to be with your, with, with, your, with your mistress and then your wife is going to be walking. You guys are going to, God does not answer those prayers. And a lot of us want those prayers. He does not answer a prayer of sin. He is holy. And this is why we need to repent from our sins. And God will answer that prayer. And this is why we need to rejoice. This is why it's called rejoice and answer prayer. Rejoicing. Oh, yes, God answered my prayer. And then we forget the next day. Never, listen to me clearly, never forget where God has taken you out of. And never forget where God is going to take you. We can never forget that. A lot of us, God takes us out 
of some of, so, of a very heavy deep hole and you forget God and this is why when we read in Psalms 51 David he really was with his heart repenting and asking God for forgiveness are central themes in the Bible particularly we see it in the New Testament repentance involves turning away from our sins and turning to God but see, this is sin, right? And this is God. This is us. We want to right, we want to walk right through the sin. We want to right run right through pornography. We want to go right to getting drunk. We want to go right to overdosing. But God, this is all we need. We don't need drugs. We don't need to get drunk. We don't need to satisfy and, and go with four or five different women and men to fulfill that love when God is all we need. People need A, B, C, D, all the way to Z. But God says, all you need is me. Oh, that rhymes. You should make a song with that. No, <laughs> but God says, all I need is me. That's all we need is our love for God. The importance of repentance is also seeking God's forgiveness. First John 1 9 says, if we confess our sin, he is faithful. But we're not confessing. We don't want to confess. And how do we expect for God to be faithful to us? When you have a daughter or son or brother or sister or even a boss, and you say, you know what, I did steal this, I apologize, I'm sorry. Hey, they would, okay, thank you for apologizing. But see, sometimes our bosses are dark, we're stealing, they see us, and we're quiet. But see, when it says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess, if we confess, and right now, if you have a sin that you're hiding, it's time to confess. I'm not saying come to me, go to everyone else and tell your sin. Come to the altar and confess what you have done and watch what God is going to do in your life. That is a true confession. To say, God, I did this. God, I'm sorry. Luke 13, 3 says, but unless you repent, unless you repent, you too will perish. It's time to repent. Because if we don't repent, if we don't come and we don't say, God, I'm sorry, the trumpet, the God could come right now. And where is your life? Where would your life be? Acts 3.19. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. But we want to run to sin instead of running to God. And then it keeps saying the times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Ephesians 1.7. In him we have redemption through his blood, the for the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of God's grace. These passages and so many passages in the Bible makes it clear that repentance and seeking God's forgiveness are essential for our spiritual well-being and our relationship with God. You want to have a relationship with God? Oh, yes, pastor, I want a relationship with God. What are we doing then? What are we doing to have a relationship with God? Are we fasting? Are we praying? Are we coming to church? Are we taking the time? Oh, it's no problem to go to work Monday to Friday, but it's a problem to come once a week. You think the job will pay you more? I guess you guys haven't really trusted God because God will give you more. He will pay you overtime. That's the God I serve, that he will supply all of our needs, everything, everything. Yes, I'm not saying don't work and be at home all day. I'm not saying that. Of course, we need to work because if those who don't work, you don't eat. But what we do is we do more excuses. When you go home, make that little sacrifice to come to the house of the Lord. In the summary, the importance of repentance and seeking God's forgiveness lies in the fact that it's our essential components of our spiritual growth and relationship with God. Through repentance and seeking forgiveness, we acknowledge our sinfuls and our needs for God's mercy and grace. We open ourselves to receive his blessing and the gift of salvation. I'm going to end with three of these three points. Turn away. Okay. Repent and rejoice. Rejoice. That even though you did what you did, you're turning away. You're repenting. And you're going to rejoice. Because what God is going to do is something new in our life. But we have to do our part. 
and say, God, I'm here. So in this morning, if you have been having trouble with sinful desires, you're practicing sin, or you have done something, ask God to forgive you. Just come to the altar right here and say, God, I'm sorry. I need you. I need you, God. God loves you. If you believe the lies of the enemy, <laughs> he's going to take you right with him. How do we believe more the lies of the enemy than the one that created us in our mother's womb? So remember, he loves you. He loves your family. He loves your children. He loves your husband. He loves your wife. He loves your children. He loves, he loves everything. And I, be, and I sometimes, it's not even wish, I, my heart desires that people could really see the love of God in their life. And where God has taken them. I was having a conversation with someone. And God did a miracle in their life. And they still say that they don't believe in miracles. When they were not breathing. Almost five minutes without breathing. Then. Air started coming. And they still do not believe in miracles. What God did in their child's life. Are we that blind to really see. What God has been doing in our life. Right now, you could think of so much that the Lord has taken you out. And we still yet are complaining right now through the trial that we're facing. When we have not yet remembered what God has done and what God continues doing. It's a trial. It's a pain now. It's confusion now. But when we go to God, it's not confusion. Is saying, I'm trusting you in these times of trouble the same way David did. And I'm going to rejoice in these times of trouble. Sometimes that trial and that trouble is because God is seeing your faithfulness. Because God is seeing where your heart really is the same way David is. God is really seeing if you're being obedient. God is really seeing if what you're doing is you're doing it with your heart. And that's why God is continue blessing you because you're doing it from the heart. But when we do it because, oh, I'm doing it because I have to, or I'm doing it because it's a responsibility. or If you're doing something for the Lord because you think you have to, then just drop it. Because you don't have to do it. You think God needs you? We need him. But see, he's so loving that even though he don't need us, He's still there, and he's still faithful. And those gifts that God has given you, don't put them to waste, but give it to the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Father, for your love. Thank you, Father, for everything that you do and continue doing. Look at those that are here, Father. Continue blessing their hearts. I ask you, Father, that you continue giving them the strength if they have sinned against you, Father. Forgive them. Forgive them, God, and love them. In Jesus' name we pray and we say amen. Thank you. If you would love prayer, you could call us at 951-737-1717 or text us at 951 951- 870-7170 on our social media. You can comment down below your prayer request and we will continue praying for you. God bless you.